I have to say, though, that I'm in, I think, very friendly disagreement with some of the speakers here. I certainly agree that Social Security is an overwhelming achievement. Um, but, you know, I don't think the Second New Deal was an obelisk. It was more like a temple at least with at least two pillars. And that's one pillar was so, certainly Social Security. The second, however, was the Wagner Act. And I think somebody needs to get up because I noticed that, you know, there aren't all that many places this year celebrating Social Security. There are virtually none celebrating the Wagner Act. And I think that's... Now, and this needs a, a comment because if, if you look, the, the most, maybe the most singular thing about the New Deal was the way in the middle of a giant world depression, it accommodated millions of striking workers and actually changed the legal framework to make collective bargaining possible. And it did it with, an, with a giant surge in voting turnout that should be considered part of that uh, political mobilization associated with the Wagner Act, and, and it did it in a democratic framework. That was, you know, in other countries, they were doing not a new deal, but a new order. And you could watch one by one, I mean, it, it had occurred, you know, in Italy in the 20s, in Germany in the 30s, a lot of other places, you just exterminated labor movements and you changed the form of the regime. The, the Roosevelt achievement here uh, is enormous. Uh, and, it, and it's very important to sort of uh, notice that. It, it, the Wagner Act you know, does remain the ugly duckling uh, of the New Deal. So let me just, it, and it has, however, I think a very important relation to Social Security. These two acts were not born, they were born together, but they were certainly not identical twins. 